Hey, welcome back to NASA Edge. We have a wonderful person right here next to us, Robbie Kearns, who is the project manager for shuttle here at NASA Langley Research Center. Yes, and um, is it all right if I call you Robbie? Uh, you can call me sir. Yeah. Oh, oh, perfect. <laughs> Great. Yeah, that's or, perfect. Or, well, Robbie, we have a number of questions from our fans. These are questions that aren't just your typical questions that you find in FAQ or frequently. Ask Frequently questions. asked questions. questions. Yeah, I All got right. that. Uh, we have seven questions, uh, wonderful questions. From uh, our Facebook friends and MySpace friends. And, and from our NASA Edge uh, email address. Well, let's, let's start off with the first question from Sarah in Florida. Uh, in what order and how does the shuttle get stacked? Um, the stack, as she refers to, is actually a combination of the solid rocket boosters, the external tank, which is the big fuel tank, and the orbiter itself. And the stacking process actually begins uh, with a mobile launching platform that they put inside the vehicle assembly building. Then they take the individual segments of the solid rocket boosters and ship them from the manufacturing plant in uh, Utah okay. and ship them to the Cape uh, and they store them there. Then they take the external tank, which is made in a plant in Louisiana, and ship it by barge. Then the orbiter itself is stored at Kennedy in the vehicle processing building. Okay. Once all the components are there at KSC, then they uh, begin the stack-up process. Which they take the individual segments of each of the boosters, and they start mounting them on the solid, uh, the mobile launch platform. Then once the solid rocket boosters are put together and assembled, then they take the uh, external tank and bring that in and bolt that to the solid rocket booster. Then they bring the orbiter in, and so when, when everything is all bolted together, then uh, then it's ready for the three-mile journey out to the launch pad. And that's all done by a crane? There's a huge crane inside the vehicle assembly building that's okay. responsible for lifting these critical items. Let's go to question number two. It's from Chelsea in Huntsville, Alabama. Of course, Marshall Space Flight Center is, is right is right there. Okay, so her question is, uh, how does NASA plan to get to the ISS, or the International Space Station, after the shuttle retires? Uh, once the shuttle retires in 2010, then we'll simply rely on the Russian spacecraft, which is a Soyuz, which has been flying to the space station for years anyway. So, so like, are the controls on the opposite side in the Russian craft? They, they fly on the right-hand side of space. Right. Okay. There's always the uh, the chance that, the, that other international parties, uh, partners will have um, spacecraft as well that can dock at the station. Oh, wonderful. So when the new vehicle is ready to go and comes online, you know, around, you know, 2014, 2015, uh, we'll right, rely right, on, then, on the Russian space. Right, then the Orion spacecraft will be able to we'll carry. Come online. But that, I hope that doesn't interfere with your Meteonaut application. Because what's happening, Robbie, is he's trying to become the first Meteonaut to go to the moon. I mean, well, he's, he's, got, he's got half of it down. He's got the nut part. <laughs> no, not. <laughs> oh, not. No, 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 I'm no. sorry, oh, okay, I misunderstood okay. you. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. Question number three. It, this is uh, from Hannah Sue, who uh, lives in Ark City, Kansas. Uh, what does NASA plan to do with the orbiters after the spatial uh, program is retired in Excellent 2010? Excellent question. Wow, there's a lot of people that would like to know the answer to that question. eBay. Uh, eBay <laughs> may be a very well, uh, uh, awesome. very well uh, happen. Uh, the, the real answer is right now, I don't think anybody actually knows. What they could do is, you know, since there are, for example, the heat tiles, you know, there are over 24,000 heat tiles per shuttle, and we have three shuttles, we could use some of those for, for education purposes, sending them out to schools to, to use in science classes. I mean, there's sure, sure. a lot of different parts in there. Yeah, yeah it's still They use them cool. for trainers or simulators. Or right. Use as a hotel? <laughs> Put in the cargo bay? But, you know, yeah, as, as, as the... Space uh, camp uh, sp edition. That's right. As, a, as the largest uh, space transportation system vehicle that's ever been built, I'd be willing to bet one of them at least will wind up in the Smithsonian. Maybe we can get it here at Langley. Wouldn't that be cool? Right in the studio. I like it. Right, right off the studio. We go right out and we get right in the cargo bay. put the bay. studio in the cargo bay. I like the way he thinks. Although well, that's... well, as an outsider, do you think you have enough pull to get a shuttle here? Yes. Do you? <laughs> All right. Well, write your congressman. Yeah, right. <laughs> That'll be the only avenue I'll have. Well, we have a... Uh, actually, this question is from our uh, NASA Edge uh, from, the, from the website. Yep. Okay, here's the, his question. Uh, the shuttle uses a system of tiles. Uh, to protect its underside during re-entry, and we should be talked about that. Uh, why not cover the bottom of the shuttle with a thick, smooth surface of strong material instead? Or why not coat the bottom of the shuttle with a superficial, disposable material that wears away during re-entry? Sort of like an ablator. A what? You, you just answered the question. The, the material that he's actually defining is, is called an ablator. It's a, it's a type of material that actually burns away during re-entry. But it has disadvantages for shuttle use, which is why it's not used on the shuttle, 
Uh, those being that the material number one is, is a lot denser than the tiles that they use, therefore it's a lot heavier. Okay. Uh, that's and important. and the surface roughness of the ablator is, is not smooth enough to meet the shuttle criteria. Okay, gotcha. Where the tiles actually produce a really smooth uh, flow surface. Okay. Uh, we have another question here from Vincent in Murraysville, Pennsylvania. Great question here. How are crew selections made for shuttle missions? Draft. <laughs> <laughs> that's like that's NFL, the army. NFL draft. No, yeah, I mean it's, it's you know it's like an all star. You know, is that right, sir? No. Oh. But it's, right. it's close though. Okay. It's close. It's close. Okay. Um, crew members are actually selected out of a uh, out of the crew vehicle off out of the crew office. Okay. That resides at Johnson Space Center. Okay. Uh, and the crew office, of course, is made up of, of people who have gone through extensive training to become astronauts. Right. Um, they have various backgrounds. Some some are pilots. Uh, some are scientists, some are engineers. Um, those folks are usually called mission specialists. Right. Um, and the actual crew selection for specific uh, missions is based on several things. It's based on um, people's backgrounds, you know, what the requirements of the mission are. Right. So they, they try and match up the people's skills with the, um, with the mission requirements. Okay. Well, Robbie, we have uh, one more question. Okay. Uh, this is uh, from Stephen in Shreveport, Louisiana. This is a good question. Uh, how is landing the shuttle different than landing a commercial jet? Wow. Well, I've never really landed either one of them, but uh, <laughs> so much for the SME. I'll yeah, so much. For, well, no, I, I, I did stay at a Holiday Inn once, so, <laughs> so I, I think I can yeah, okay. get most of this one right. Oh, there you go. Uh, I, I think really the the biggest difference is the fact that the shuttle is unpowered. Right. when it comes into the land. It's a glider. It, it's right. a glider, right. right. It's a wow. brick with wings, yeah. actually, is what it is. Um, it, it apparently handles very similar to a large uh, commercial aircraft, uh, but you only get one shot. That's true. That's, that's so, right. You know, there's, there's no fly around. Absolutely. So, so something, uh, you know, something goes wrong, you know, during the first try, then that, that's all you get. Well, I think uh, we've come to a close on this show, Robbie. I want to thank you very much for Thanks being for here in the me. studio Enjoyed today. It. You're watching NASA Edge, an inside and outside look at all things NASA. And even though we have a great guest, don't get used to it because I'll be back in this position <laughs> for the next show. Although we would like to have you on again. I'd love future, to come back. Sure. Thanks. So, we'll see you next time. Hey, have a great day. Thanks. Thanks.